Let's look at these attributes in detail. Vahumana, the good mind, which has the capacity to reason and differentiate between right and wrong. Ashavahishta, best righteousness, or the ultimate underlying order of the universe. Ultimate <coughs> underlying order of the universe. What does that mean? Just think of the universe. Think of all the galaxies, all the solar systems, all the heavenly bodies going around on their orbit. Millions and millions of tons and tons of bodies. They don't collide. There's an order there. There's a superb order by which they do their job. They function without colliding, unlike the traffic in Houston and Toronto. Kshatravarya, <laughs> or Divine Kingdom, or Good Society. Spent our mighty, holy devotion, or a quality which is present in an individual, which inspires him or her to goodness. Horvata, the spirit of well-being, which progressively becomes perfection. And finally, Ameretta, immortality. That doesn't mean you don't pop off, it just means the immortality of spirit. In a video called The Voice of Zarathustra, Professor Kaikosro Virani, Professor Emeritus of City College, New York, explains the likely structural relationships between these attributes and how they work in a following manner. It is with the help of our good mind that we search for and find the best righteousness. This, in turn, creates the desirable kingdom or society in which our devotion for the Ahura Mazda leads us to perfection or wholeness of being and eventually mortality of spirit. In the beginning of this talk, I had mentioned that there are some differences between the translations of Professor Tara Porvala and Professor Stanley Ginsler. <coughs> Exploring these variations may help us to better understand or get a deeper meaning of these attributes. Let's look at some of these differences, a couple of them. While Professor Stanley Insler and various others refer to Vahumana as the good mind, Professor Tarapovala considers it to stand for love. He goes on to explain that the one thing essential for the good mind is all embracing love. As regards Asha, the commonly accepted meaning of truth is righteousness. Professor Tarapovala goes deeper by explaining that Asha stands for the divine plan of Ahura Mazda, which maintains proper order in his creations. When one goes against the principles of Asha, one actually upsets the divine vision of Ahura Mazda. We cause such an upset when we consciously act in a manner that would cause harm to our fellow beings. Recently, in my religion class, I wanted to demonstrate that Asha is not just truth, lie. It's not as black and white as that. There are, there are, there are many, 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 many ways to think of Asha. So I put the sort of a scenario to the classroom. I said to the kids, I'm going to give you a scenario. And each of you individually will have to describe to me what your action or how you will react to such a scenario <coughs> in your life if, if, if you're faced with it. And so the scenario was, you're standing outside a building in a desolate area. A person comes running up to you and says, there are some very nasty people chasing me. If they catch me, they're going to kill me. Please help me. Please don't tell them where I'm hiding. And goes away and hides. A few moments later, a mob comes running up and demands to know if you've seen an individual in this area. What are you going to do? 
Are you going to uphold the laws of truth and speak the truth and risk getting this poor guy killed? Or are you going to lie and break the law of Asha? Well, <laughs> I got various interesting answers from the children, ranging from, no, 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 I won't tell them where he is, they'll kill him, I'll lie. There were some who threw up their hands and said, ah, this is too difficult a question, somebody's life is in balance, how can I handle that? And there was this one little kid who came up with one of the smartest answers I've heard so far. The kid said, I don't know if the individual is telling the truth or not. So, but I don't want to get killed, so I won't tell them where this person is hiding. But as soon as they are gone, I'll call the police and let them handle it. <laughs> there you go. A perfect interpretation, a perfect way of handling Asha. Using your good mind to make a good decision, a sensible decision. <coughs> Very good. Well, regardless of these differences in interpretations by different scholars, the Prophet's message remains consistent. And the question that springs to our mind is, how can we incorporate these divine attributes in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, each of these divine attributes has also got an earthly connection which helps us to think in concrete terms and makes life a bit easier. Thus, where Vahumana is in charge of animals. Asha Vahishta is associated with fire. Kshatra Vairya with metal. Spenta Armaiti represents the earth. Horvata is connected with water and Amerita with plants. Not only do these attributes have earthly connections, but one can observe their manifest manifestation in daily life that we lived in India. For example, the essence of maintaining Vahumana is the rejection of all things negative. Therefore, the habit of keeping our house free of all nasho, such as dirt, loose hair, cut fingernails, was aimed at filling our surroundings and consequently our minds with positives. <coughs> Kindness to animals, such as feeding fruit peels to goats. And in some orthodox households, abstaining from eating flesh on Burman Maino and Burman Roach was perhaps a constant reminder for us to strive for the best righteousness. For the for Vahumana, I'm sorry. Respect for fire and the ritual of doing the Loban was perhaps a constant reminder for us to strive for the best righteousness. The act of giving false promises was considered sinful. This is not to imply that all Zartushtis were truthful always, but by and large, trustworthiness was a desirable goal. In Iran, even today, non zarthushti Iranis would prefer to employ Zarthushti tradesmen due to his trustworthiness. The ancient and fast disappearing Zarthushti beliefs about not polluting our earth could have an indirect homage to Spenta Armaiti, born out of our devotion to all creations of our Guru Mazda. Our reverence for water in the form of offering prayers at Ava Yasadmu Parak was, could have been aimed at attaining Horvata or perfection. Even the fact that we do a lot of things with flowers in our every ritual. Connection with Amerita, plants. As mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, when I first started writing down the doctrinal aspects of Zartusti living, I felt blocked. This blockage was created by a feeling of futility in trying to apply this doctrine in today's fast-paced Western way of life. Well, then when I mentally revisited my early life in India, I realized how easily and seamlessly these doctrines were woven into our daily routines. 
Of course, this was made easier by the fact that most of us, especially those of us living in Bogs and Parsi colonies, were surrounded by our own community and had easy access to places of worship and halls for social gatherings. When we emigrated, we felt the lack of these facilities, and, but we were unable to do anything about it because we were busy trying to find a footing in this foreign land. So where does that leave us? If we do not have access to Parsi colonies, which could provide a process of learning by osmosis as similar to the one enjoyed by me and so many of my generation, do we not have the ability to weave the core doctrines easily into our daily lives here? I believe that as individuals and as a community, we do have that capacity. As for going to an Aghiari, one can see the difficulties involved with distances on this continent. Just take this morning, for example. We took forever getting here, even though it's a 15 minute drive. We, we drive for hours getting to and from work every day. If we then have to drive for another half hour, to reach the nearest Darbemer every evening, we ain't going to be up to it. So, there are many other doctrines that can be maintained at home, such as saying our prayers as a family, together with our children. We can honor the principle of Asha by developing the habit of truthfulness, setting an example to our children about truthfulness. Even in our business dealings, that's a rare commodity in the business world. We could practice Kshatravairya, the divine kingdom of good society, by living in harmony as a community and not squabbling or petty differences saying who or who or who doesn't work. Although we Zartushtis are an exilic people and we do move around from place to place, wherever we move, we take our religion and its core principles and make them, make them a part of our daily lives. We keep our religion alive that way. The Zarathustri religion is not rooted in buildings and neighborhoods, although those are important factors as they tend to make life a bit easier. But they are not the main essence. Well, our faith has lived within us and has survived during our emigration from Iran to India, Pakistan, Africa, England, United States, Canada, Australia, Hong Kong, Singapore. A number of families still maintain the practice of Loban in their house. For example, our, in UK, our son and his wife involve their children in regularly spreading Loban in their home. And they use Agarbatti when Loban is not easily available. <laughs> Moreover, this becomes a good time for the family to spend a few minutes in prayer in a spiritual manner together. We conduct religion classes for our children and we try to instill in their minds our Zarathustri core principles with particular reference to the triad of good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. You see, this gives them a sense of belonging, a sense of who they are and where they have come from. When our children know where they come from, when they know who they are, they can then take this knowledge forward with them and impart it in their own offsprings. The current ecological awareness amongst our youngsters will help in keeping Spenta Armaiti alive in their thoughts. In one of our religion classes during a discussion on using our Bahumana, for making the right choice. One student showed her grasp of the subject by recounting an episode of Garfield the cartoon cat. Now, Garfield, as was his habit, was about to kick poor little dog Odie off the table. <coughs> At that point, two images spring up on each side of Garfield. An angel Garfield saying, no, 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 don't do that, not a good thing to do. And the other side, a devil got and saying, go ahead, do it, make you feel good. Well, this showed 
that the child had truly understood the duality of our spirit, and that it is up to the individual to make the good choice, a basic tenet of our religion. I'm sad to report Garfield did pick Odi off the table. <laughs> Made the bad choice. Of course, Zarthushtis in various diaspora will adapt differently in keeping with the norms of their adopted countries. The simplest way for me to demonstrate that would be to, if you took a pack of cards, divided it in half and threw one half up in the air, one doesn't expect all the cards to land in the same manner, face up or face down. Some will fall face up, some will fall face down. So there are bound to be differences, but that's absolutely okay. Because in spite of these cultural differences, Zarthushti communities have adapted to their milieu and have grown and flourished because they have successfully incorporated our core principles in their daily lives. The doctrine is not enshrined in books, but in how we keep it in our hearts and in our lives and foster it in the hearts of our future generations. Thank you. I think we have got some time.